Hi there, this is Rob Chadwick from ADL, and this is the tenth in a series of short tutorials on using the Virtual World Framework Sandbox application. In our last tutorial, we looked at materials, and prior to that, we looked at making shapes. So, up to this point, we've created a shape out of a plane and a noise modifier. We've added some kind of materials to it to make it look a little bit like a rocky desert landscape. In this tutorial, I want to talk a little bit about the scene properties. Uh, specifically, we'll add some fog and maybe change the angle of the sun, and uh, add some kind of sky background. Now, up to this point, we've been seeing all of these objects have properties that appear in the tray at the side. In this case, I just went ahead and selected the terrain. The scene itself also has properties, and those have the same kind of controls that appear in the side panel. To select the scene, there's a couple of things you can do. If you remember from the hierarchy lesson, you'll know that all objects are children of the scene object. So if you select, any, well, unless you make them, you know, children of other objects specifically, um, but if you grab an object that doesn't really have a parent, and you select parent with the select parent button right here, you'll go up to the scene object. Or, if you have nothing selected, let me try select nothing, there we are, you can go to edit, select, select scene. Now I've got the scene selected, and you see this bounding box is drawn. That bounding box actually goes all the way out to the edges of the world. That's pretty far away. Um, now I've got the scene selected, I'll go ahead and open the object properties and open the uh, the panel here for scene and you'll see I've got a set of properties sun color ambient light fog color fog density fog type and a couple other options to begin here I'm gonna go ahead and choose a background image for the sky I happen to like cloudy noon for these desert environments so if I just click cloudy noon I think that's a good background for a scene like this there we go the sky texture pops right in very nice. So you see we have this nice sky background. Um, I've clicked on the terrain. I'm going to have to uh, edit, select scene again to make sure I have the scene selected. Let's look at some of the other ones. We have morning, kind of a bright sunset, bright. Obviously just a very simple bright, bright, bright blue. Um, and there's a couple of nighttime maps as well. Now these are just image files. And, uh, and you can load them into the system if you own the server. But I currently don't have a way for you to upload them. I'm going to go back to Cloudy Noon because I like it for desert environments. And the next thing we're going to do is look at the fog. Let's start by uh, going to Linear Fog instead of None. So with Linear Fog instead of the None Fog, I can pull in the far and near values to kind of set the distance at which the environment is 100% covered in fog. Um, if I flip over to Quadratic, in that case I'm going to be using this Fog Density slider to uh, to set the value. Now the quadratic value actually is a, is I think I think a better solution because it takes into account distance as it fades in. But you can really choose whichever one of those you like better. Um, finally, the the fog here is white and it doesn't really match the background terribly well. I'm going to go to fog color and let's see if we can't find just the right shade of peach. Hey, now there that looks pretty good right there. Maybe ever so slightly too red. Nice. Nice. Oh, I keep selecting off the scene. There we go. So now we fade nicely into the distance. And if I turn that density up even higher, there we go. So that's great. And you know what? Now that I've actually turned the density up, I think I think we could go ever so slightly more red. There. There. That's good. Oh, that's very good. Um, all right, great. So, uh, so we've done a couple things. We've set a sky background. We've adjusted the fog. I'm going to keep. I keep clicking off it. Of course, every time I click back in the window, I end up hitting the terrain. Um, let's move the sun around. Now we have a couple options here. The sun intensity. You'll see if I just turn this up. Boom! It is like glowing. I'm going to leave that right around where it was. Or we have the sun direction. This is just the x, y, and z rotation of the sun. I like to have it at a bit of a harder angle. And you'll see here, watch as the character shadow moves. All right, now it's on the other side. I do think that uh, now that I've moved the sun a little bit, this bump map is really kind of in your face. So I'm going to select this guy and pull up the material editor. And I'm just going to dial back the alpha on the bump map, because I think that is too much. There, that looks much better. 
much better. It's not nearly so uh, so in your face. So very good. We've moved the sun, and I think that it looks a little bit nicer uh, rather than being perfectly mathematically straight down. Um, you saw the sun uh, the sun intensity. Let's look at one last thing in the scene properties. And again, I've got to make sure to have the scene selected. There we are. Of course, you can change the ambient color. In this case, if I want to make this really harsh, I can make the ambient black and the sun more intense. And that'll give us these deep, dark shadows and very, very... You know, you'll actually see there's... You can't see anything because there's no ambient lighting on the inside of here. Maybe that's just a little bit too low. Turn it up just so there's something to see in there. And wow, that is a just scorched desert. That's great. Maybe a little bit less. So the final thing we can do with the scene properties is actually modify the default grid. If I, uh, obviously in this case I've got this beautiful terrain, but if I just want to change the default grid texture to something that's not such an eyesore, while I've got the scene selected, I can just open the material editor. It works exactly like the materials did from the previous lesson. So if I just grab a map, I can just change the default grid to be a flat plane of the same, uh, the same desert texture. So that's it for scene properties. Not a whole lot in there, but enough for you to, to customize these things a little bit. You can make it night, you can make it day, you can make it outer space, however you like to handle that.